Hey everybody, welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski and we're gonna be making a painting together today in real time. So the painting that we're gonna to make today is one of, I think one of the great paintings of all time. Or oops, where's my, um, okay, I'm just gonna to have to recreate one of these here. Um, come on, you get all set up and then computer wants to be fishy on you okay so the painting we're gonna make today is this painting by American artist Mary Cassatt in 17 or 1878 called a woman standing holding a fan and this is an important painting of hers and an important painting in American and European art because this is one of her first Impressionist paintings. We, well, let's look a little bit at Mary Cassatt's life here. Mary Cassatt, as I said, was an American painter born uh, near Pittsburgh, or what is now Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And though she spent most of her life in France, and she got to know many of the French artists who were uh, the, the main people who were involved in Impressionism, and I think what's really interesting about her story is the amount of challenges that she had to overcome in order to exhibit her art and to be recognized as an artist. You have to remember life was quite different for everybody, but in particularly for women 150 years ago when she was alive. And if you read through her biography, you'll see kind of setback after setback after setback because she wasn't allowed to exhibit uh, with men. She was when she went to art school and they had models, nude models posing, even though often almost always they were nude women painting. Women themselves were not allowed to be in the room while those paintings were being made by the male students. And at the time, most of the students that were going to art school, I think she went to the Pennsylvania Academy of the Arts, I think, in um, like Philadelphia, uh, she, you know, they'd have to step outside the room and they'd have to paint from the uh, plaster casts of, of, of uh, so-called master sculptors like Michelangelo and such. Um, you can see here when she, she eventually moved to Paris and she tried studying at the Ecole des Beaux-Arts. And of course, since women couldn't apply, she ended up kind of doing some studying on her own. And you know, it really took a very determined individual uh, to continue to try to, she was really determined to, to, to be an artist and she just kept on pushing past these boundaries that existed for her. And because of that, she was really embraced by uh, the, the men that were around her at the time. Edgar Degas would probably be the most famous artist and friend of hers. Uh, and, you know, the, the artist circles at that time, you know, artists may tend to be a little bit more progressive than the rest of the culture. And her friends accepted, her male friends accepted her, and they just clearly recognized her talent. And uh, because, I think also because the, the artists that she was friends with, like Degas and Manet, all of these painters who are, are very famous for having established the Impressionist art movement, they were also cast out of the mainstream when it came, when it came to art. There was uh, in Paris, you know, uh, for a couple hundred years prior to this, to, there was this thing called the Salon, and the Salon would be part of the Academy of Art where, you know, you'd have these master painters who would train their apprentices and they would have these huge exhibitions where the paintings were stacked on top of one another. You may have heard of this term, hanging something salon style, which is you have literally paintings, they're all framed and they're mounted on the wall, but some of them are just you know, a fraction of an inch right off of the ground, and they go all the way up to the ceiling, and even sometimes they'd be, they'd be kind of propped up on the ceilings, kind of leaning down. So. And you're talking hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of arts, artworks, you know, put up on these really, like in gymnasiums, basically. 
and people would come and they would look at the paintings and of course i don't know how you would see a painting <laughs> on the ceiling um from but especially because some of them aren't that big but uh anyway most of those salons did not admit women into the salon and the impressionist painters like claude monet and manet and degas were also even though they may have shown once or twice they were very frustrated because they were also rejected and weren't allowed to exhibit in some of those spaces so they formed their own salon and one of the features of the salon was they admitted women into the salon and mary cassatt was also was was one of the very first women i think one of only three women that were um kind of had that opportunity again because there also was there was a lot of women who would learn to paint and it was seen as sort of one of those lady-like activities, right? You'd learn how to paint as well as, you know, uh, cook and fold doilies and things. And that would be make you a suitable uh, <laughs> a wife for, for some gentleman, right? But most women either weren't allowed to or didn't take it seriously for all sorts of various different reasons. She, of course, certainly did. And she showed a lot of talent and ability. Um, and, uh, let me see, let, well, let's jump right into, into her, well, let, I'll show maybe a few of her artworks. Here's a, some, a photograph of her and a couple self-portraits as well as a lot of paintings of people. And you could see a lot of her artwork was of her family, her children, uh, or sorry, she, I don't think she had children, but, um, her, her like nieces and nephews and her brothers and sisters. I think she had five or six, you know, uh, brothers and sisters. Um, a couple of them died when they were young. And so she often painted these very domestic scenes of families, you know, in the backyard, little children running around. And that was probably both because it might have subjects that were interesting to her, but again, women didn't really have a lot of freedom at the time so you know a single woman walking around with her easel and going and setting up in the park like her friends Degas and Manet might have you know attracted some either the police would have come and, and given her a hard time or strangers would have come up and and uh, knocked her paintings over which was not uncommon she was I don't know if it's mentioned in here but one of the things uh, Mary Cassatt was a part of this, there was a kind of this idea of the new woman. And Mary Cassatt never married, um, but uh, she would, she often, I think, saw it as important to depict women like herself that had very different viewpoints from the dominant patriarchy and were interested in challenging that. Anyway, let's get to painting one of her paintings. <laughs> Donna says, I was in the sauna and lost track of time. That's a great way to lose track of time. So, uh, let's grab some canvases here. I was going to, um, it looks like I'm out of my canvas boards. So today I'm going to paint on a canvas stretched on a frame. So a little bit of a, a different approach. plastic and obviously this is a canvas that has not been prepared I haven't gessoed it in any way um, let me see I was uh, for the past few episodes I keep forgetting because I wanted to show you guys just a little bit about gesso since it's since it has come up and I eventually will do a presentation just about gesso and preparing canvases. Um, let's see here. Okay, so a few things I thought I would just show. Personally, myself, I like to paint on bare canvas or what appears to be bare canvas. And a couple of the things that you're looking at here are some older paintings of mine. This is, did I sign any of these? This is 2009. And it's hard to see, 
probably in this viewpoint, but this is actually raw canvas. So here's canvas that I've stretched over a frame. And you can see I've used staples. And I'll, I'm going to do a whole episode where I show how to do all this kind of stuff. But after stretching it, what I did was coated it with... Here, here's some clear acrylic gesso. Um, and the clear acrylic gesso is just like the regular gesso, but it's clear. Or it, it looks mostly clear it has a slight ghosted effect and again clear gesso looks a lot like white glue you know it goes on white but then it dries almost entirely clear so it has that kind of a look and the reason why is i like the look of the bare canvas i mean on screen right now it probably looks like this is white but it it is bare canvas and what I, I do after it's dried is I sand it and then I put another coat on and I sand it again. And that creates this super smooth surface, which makes for the a painting really fun and, and fluid and easy. And then here's another version really quick. You can see what I've done is like, this is a piece of plywood and then I've used uh, a um, table saw to run it through and create a little beveled edge so that I can just put a nail into the wall and it hangs on the head of the nail, right? Anyway, you could see I've stretched, in this case, rather than canvas, what is called Belgian linen. And Belgian linen is, is a lot like regular canvas. It just has, obviously, a slightly different color. And it tends to be a little bit of a finer weave so that um, it's a little bit easier to uh, to prepare, it doesn't have such texture. And of course, well, not of course necessarily, but if uh, personally, if you're going to use this, because this is also much more, probably at least twice as expensive than regular canvas, is if you're going to use it, then you kind of want to see this, this uh, gray brown uh, um, linen coming through. So that's, again, why it specifically I would use the, a clear gesso to prep this painting because I also really like the the look of the can the linen showing through here because it's sort of this neutral gray almost it's a little bit warmer than than most gray but it provides this middle ground and a lot of artists like we're going to do today prep the canvas before they, they paint on it with a neutral gray or an earthy red or some kind of uh, color just to kind of get it started. Anyway, I thought I would mention that off the top. So again, the difference between these two products and they come in all sorts of different, every brand usually produces, you know, a regular gesso and then the clear gesso. Just on, while it's on the top of my head, I also will prep a raw canvas with something called PVA glue, polyvinyl acetate, or polyvinyl acrylic, I think. And that's an alternative to what's called rabbit skin glue. And I usually put that on first before the gesso, but I think that's maybe way over. <laughs> that is intended to stabilize the, the canvas and keep the, the, the canvas or linen from uh, expanding or contracting in different temperatures but that's for something another time so let me see I, mean, I might need to back that out just a little bit okay so let's take a look at this painting by Mary Cassatt again how are we going to make this painting so there there are, this by also by the way is one of the reasons why I chose this painting, I've wanted to, to paint her artwork for a while, but one of the reasons why I chose this specific one is I think it's among the least complex impressionist paintings that I could find. And I saw in the comment, Gail already says, I'm so excited to paint this, but I'm also nervous because I'm thinking this might be the most challenging painting we've done so far. Um, but I'm going to show you that, that if you've made any of the other paintings in the past, I think you'll find this one is around the same level of difficulty so it shouldn't be too much more i think what might intimidate some people is the fact that there's a person there 
and it's a person that looks relatively realistic, so that makes people a little bit leery, right? So, but I promise you we're gonna find a way to make this painting as simple as possible. And again, it's, we're painting impressionist paintings, and one of the features of, of impressionism is not a, a, a rock solid realism, like a photographic realism, but the impression of a person or a landscape. And that's really an important thing. We're gonna come back to this as we go along here. So, um, so I'll talk about how we're gonna paint this shortly, but let's do a drawing on the surface here to, to get things started. So I've put my cursor on the computer screen roughly about middle way here. And let's look at drawing this. Again, I'm gonna draw a lines right up and down the middle to help orient things. And look, this is not perfectly center, right? In fact, the center is probably closer to there, but I don't mind, I don't mind. Okay, I'm also just going to make a couple notes to myself that, you know, let's say the head, I kind of want to start up there, or not to go really any further up there if I can avoid it. And then her body, let's say if we think of this as half and then a quarter, it looks like the, like the bottom of her dress comes down right around that, that level, right? So the top of her head's up here, and this is the bottom of her dress and the shadow we down here. Obviously, her, her canvas that she painted on was very narrow. So, you know, I could take my scissors out and chop down this, uh, this painting just to make it fit a little bit more. But I'm gonna just allow it to expand a little bit bigger than it has um, originally. Okay. So what do we do next? How do we get this image onto the canvas? And maybe, you know, I'm just gonna make this a little bigger. So it's basically the same size, right? Okay. So we have a head over here. And let's say the head, again, let's say if we divide this in half, that might be helpful too. All right, so we've got these halves. It looks like her armpit is almost, I think it's maybe a little bit higher than that, but her armpit's in this area too. So I'm always looking for parts in a, when I'm translating an image onto a canvas, recognizable sort of points of contact here for me. Okay, so if I think of her dress, Let's go back to the middle of this painting, somewhere around here. And you can see that it's almost all of her, her torso and legs fit on this left side here. All right, so I'm gonna draw kind of like a, you know, uh, what would you call this? Like a, uh, a pickle. Kind of looks like a big pickle here shape, right? And that's kind of her, her lower body and the legs kind of fitting in here in that dress. All right. Okay. And then on top of that, we have, I'm going to draw another circle. All right. This is her upper torso, including her chest right here. And then her armpit is kind of right around here. We'll get to that in a second, but let's now draw her head. Her head is, she's kind of leaning over. And so her head is somewhere here. We can make it bigger or smaller. We're not right, really there yet to, to make those changes yet. So let's just keep on moving forward. Then we've got an arm. And let's just draw this line kind of like tapering down here. And you see how like her hand is roughly almost around middle here. I'm just going to put a little circle there for the hand. And I'm going to keep on going. I'm not even worried about if it's if something's a little bit off yet. I'm just going to keep on going. She's got this other arm here that kind of curves. All right. 
And in this instance, because it starts a little bit higher, right? Her shoulders are on an angle like this, right? Instead of her hand being coming down here, it comes up and her hand goes here. So you can kind of like check and see, okay, they're about the same length. Right, okay. And then we've got her fan, which, um, you know, she's got her, her hands are open here. I'm not gonna worry about getting that too close, but let's see this fan. So a couple things I see like now that I've got this in here in fact let, before I even I'll, I'm gonna keep on going let's just get the more details in we can also change things but we've got her dress kind of comes down here right again part of this would be chopped off but we have now this little bit of added space so if you wanted, of course, you could move the figure down a little bit, but I do think there's something, you know, we've got this shadow down here, which is kind of nice, and we'll maybe make this a little bit more part of this picture. Because one a feature of this artwork is that it, there's the light appears to be kind of, there's light coming on the front of her body, but there's also a stronger light coming in from behind. So we've got kind of a little bit of a halo you see kind of around on her hips and her arm as well. Okay. Maybe while we're right here, let's draw, there's a wall in behind and it's a bit of a crooked wall. Like it's a little bit on an angle. You see that? Maybe we'll come down here. I am actually just gonna straighten it a little bit just because if it's a little bit crooked and people are looking at your painting, they might think, oh, you got it a little bit crooked. No, 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 it was like that originally. I'm telling you. And they're like, yeah, okay. So, um, because people probably, you're probably not gonna hang this side by side with um, your, with a print of the original one, right? Okay. And then we've got this couch cushion, or I'm not, I think it's a couch or a chair or something here. So let's draw this here. And let, there, it's missing here, because again, this is chopped off. So we might have to do a little bit of addition here. I'm not sure how we'll sort that out, but that looks like that could be okay. Okay, we'll come to that problem in a little bit. Okay. Now, the, we want to just stop at this point and see how things are going. And kind of looking at these two images. While I take a sip of tea. Because <laughs> the, the point is, once we've got the drawing kind of at this stage, we can start make, we This is where we can make any changes if we feel we need them, right? Like, you know, in my drawing, her fan is maybe a little closer to her body than I've drawn it. So I could change that. You know, I see her dress might actually start up a little bit higher. I could change that if I felt I needed to. I'm not going to, but... Um, and her head... Like I, part of this is again is her she's leaning over so I want to make sure I capture that and it looks kind of like she's leaning over at this point so far right okay next I'm just gonna kind of start to um, bring this drawing into a little bit more detail and we're gonna cover this with a lot of paint so we don't have to worry about it being perfect I'm just now attaching her upper torso down to her, her mid torso, right, her hips, right? This is her chest right here, right? She's probably wearing some sort of really tight corset. This is probably very uncomfortable. I think there's some kind of, this is probably the bottom, kind of like where the top of her hips are, somewhere around here. Um, and then she's got her neck. 
All right, so this is uh, around her, this is her collar. Okay, now the now that the part that maybe some people are a little bit stressed out about. So how about let's zoom in here and let's oops. Just so we can kind of capture a little bit more. Okay, let me. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just draw a little line kind of straight up here. And this just is, is helping to kind of determine the direction of her head, right? And the same sort of thing, I'll do another one on the front of her face there. Okay, if this is the middle of this circle. I'm going to draw a line straight through like that. Okay, and that line is going to tell us this is where the ear is going to go. And this is also where the top, you know, her eye eyebrow is going to be right here. Little dot. All right, so we've got forehead, nose, mouth. Her hair. So, really, that's about as much detail as I'm going to put into here. Uh, because, we're, first of all, we just don't have the time to put a lot of detail in this picture. And it's also, again, this is a beginner's painting class, and we're not going to kind of overwhelm ourselves with, uh, with detail. Now, you know, when I look at the differences here, one thing I see is, you know, that her shoulder is kind of coming out a little bit closer to her mouth. All right. I, I think the way that I, the, my drawing as it stands right now, I think is acceptable. If I was really trying to make it super accurate, I could move this out, but that might mean also shifting a few other lines. So it's kind of up to you. I know this is a little bit trickier, but um, for our purpose, this is going to be fine. Let's maybe just take a quick second to look at her hands. All right, she's got. You know, kind of halfway down her arm, looks like her, sh you know, her shirt's kind of pulled up. And then she's got here, I'm just going to put a little triangle here. All right, so this is her thumb. And then her hands, or the rest of her fingers are behind her, her skirt there. And that's probably pretty good. I mean, it's going to get a little bit thinner. We'll refine this as we go. And then let's look at her other hand here. Right, so we've got, this is just this little ball here. Let's do a, a little triangle for her thumb. We've got her fingers coming up and we, we'll see how much we can actually draw in here when we paint. I don't imagine we'll get much details. Okay, cool. Okay, let's back this back out. So now let's start uh, applying some paint to this. And before I do that, I'm just going to take a look at this picture. And I haven't broken this down and, and tried to think about how to do this until this exact moment we're in right now. So looking at this, how would I approach this? And I'll, I'll say right off the top, this is we're using her picture in order to learn a little bit about painting and to have fun while we're painting. We're not, this is not a how to paint like Mary Cassatt and the Impressionists and 
diving into the depths of their technique. There's plenty of videos, really detailed, long, you know, super uh, specific academic videos out there where people analyze literally the pigments and how to make those pigments, etc. We're not going to do that. Um, this is, you know, an introductory basic painting class, and I'm more focused in trying to just get something that looks like this painting rather than replicating the exact process. I will talk a little bit about how I think she approached this, because there's going to be a few little areas where we differ from the approach I took. Okay, let's just get, I think that's everything I need. So again, I'm just painting on, on this bare canvas. I haven't prepped it in any way. This is just a dollar store canvas. Okay. Yikes. Um, so, I think I need a little sip of tea here while I think about this. So, if you remember in previous episodes what I've suggested and not just I'm making this up, but um, one of the major approaches to making paintings is putting warm, cool colors in the foreground and putting cool colors in the background. And we're going to continue that again today. In fact, a lot of the stuff that uh, approaches that we've used for previous paintings, even some of the more abstract paintings, are we're going to apply in this painting because they actually came out of the Impressionist art movement itself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply some washes on the undersurface to get it started. And one of the ways, one of the things that most of these Impressionists did was put down some very simple washes, um, usually kind of earthy, warm colors. So we're going to do the same. Okay, so let's get uh, this set up here. Uh, my cool yellow. It's so bizarre, it keeps. Oops. Okay, so I'm just putting my labels. Here. Okay, so I've got all my paints, paint colors on there. You can see arranged in the exact same way as the color wheel, right? Just to help avoid any confusion. If I'm using the same layout as the color wheel, then, you know, I, I've, I've made the color wheel. I remember where the colors go and it's just a matter of putting the colors in their right place. Now there's, there's no specific reason why I have the warm color, warm yellow here and the cool yellow here. If you've taken my class in person, I've just, or sometimes I've gone the other direction and, um, so it's, there's no science behind that. Although I'm, I'm sure that there's probably uh, an early color theorist who had a very strong feeling that, you know, the colors, at the top of the color wheel should be the reds or the blues. And there was a hierarchy of colors. And I don't know what that is. I, I am really interested in color theory. There's... Um, and I, I teach this color, color, I teach color theory at the university. Um, and the history of color theory is pretty interesting too, because what we take for granted now is certainly different than what people thought even just a uh, hundred years ago. One of the big changes that we are gonna, with this painting, is we're gonna take the black and we're gonna throw it out because we're not gonna use black. The impressionists, very anti-black paint, right? They didn't want the black paint in their picture at all. 
So virtually none of the Impressionist paintings use black. They, they, if they, and I'm sure there's a few paint. I'm sure somebody will watch this and say, no, no, no. What about Manet's Olympia or something or Dejeuner Soleil? And, and there's a little bit of black, and right? But of course, you know the uh, exception proves the rule. Okay, so let's look at this painting here. Let me get my other view and think of what colors we're going to mix here. So I'm going to put a, let me see. What I'm going to do is for the background, I'm going to put a cool yellow. And then for the foreground elements, I'm going to put a warm yellow, kind of orangey yellow. It's going to be close to her flesh tone. So it's going to be a bit of an orangey, um, kind of slightly brown look. Okay. And again, I'm not exactly sure what her approach would have been on this painting. She probably would not have used two different yellows for this. I don't think anyway, but uh, I'm not I'm not sure off the top of my head. This is just, I think, the uh, quick, the quick fastest way to do this. I'm going to put a little bit of white in here just to keep this uh, the resulting mixture as um, as luminous and bright as possible. So I'm tinting this yellow with a good amount of, 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 uh, of white. And you see I'm just dipping the paintbrush in there. Not a lot of water. But this is going to do a few things, one of which is going to make it a little bit more fluid and help get that paint to really saturate and get into the nooks and crannies of this picture. And actually, before I even begin here, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to erase a little bit of this. Where's my previous image here? So, because... Oh, Oh my goodness, look at how, what happened there. That's not good. I guess it's because I'm just drawing really, really darkly <laughs> on this canvas. Okay, not, not achieving the desired effect. So my purpose for doing this was just to kind of get some of this dark graphite off of the canvas. And then you can see in my infinite wisdom blew all my, my sharp pencil eraser shards into the paint. Um, okay. So don't do exactly what I just did. That, that was a uh, major brain malfunction happening here. So, all of this can, I mean, this is going to get into my paint. Let's just see. I'm, I'm curious. Now, it's like, let's see if I can still make this work. I, uh, if this was for my own, if something that I was going to sell in a gallery, I would probably remix that just because I don't want those little shavings. They could cause me problems down the, down the line, and we'll see if you're here... I'll do my best not to uh, drop too many uh, F-bombs if, if I do a poor job at this. Okay, if they really kind of resurface here, because they look like they're small shavings. Anyway, what I'm going to do is let's get this back here. I'm going to paint this cool yellow into the background. I may even do this chair. Yeah, let's do all of that. Okay, so I paint this cool yellow in the background. And I don't mind if I get a little bit on overlapping her body. You can see places where her arms are, hands are. I'm gonna go right down to the table. Purpose of this is to 
is to help fill in any of the white of the canvas and to give the, the paint on top of it something to react to and blend with. Oh yeah, so I was gonna do this. Let's do the chair. And also in this case, since I, I don't have, my canvas doesn't have any gesso on it, it's just helping to fill in a little bit of this, the weave of the texture. Right, so you see, I'm really making sure I get a kind of good little overlap on here. Okay, I'm also going to do the side of the picture. that in just brushing it was basically used up all the paint that was on my palette which makes me excited that there's really nothing left there so grab a rag wipe off all this excess paint I'm not gonna worry about cleaning it too well just because this is all underpainting stuff, so. Um, I just realized I didn't, I should, really what I should have been focusing my attention on was the, uh, these diagonal lines. Wow, that's pretty good. I didn't manage to get any in the paint. Whew, okay. So now I'm just gonna, we're gonna mix a warm color that's gonna fill in a lot of this area here. And so let's put her out of the way for a second. And let's look at this. So what I, I ideally want is something that's gonna be kind of close to this to her skin tone. All right, it's gonna be, so to mix a skin tone, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, uh, this will need a little bit too much red. We're gonna take probably most of this and let's scoop them together. I'm blending it nice together. Okay, I'm gonna scoop up this white that's in there. This peachy color. Um, I'm gonna need just pretty good. Yeah, what I'm okay. The last little bit is I'm gonna take a tiny bit of the warm blue. Right, you can see very little. I'm gonna throw this in here. And now I've got a color that's very close to a flesh tone. All right, it's a little bit darker, but that's fine. Maybe let's add a tinge more white into here. That's good. Okay, dip my paintbrush in just to get a little bit of water to this spread easier. Okay, switch these in and out. 
Okay, and let's do the same thing. I'm going to... Again, I'm not super concerned about these details. I just want to try to get her body basically covering up all the white of this canvas here. Okay, and it looks like I'm almost out of paint. So rather than just dumping a whole bunch of water in there to make it more fluid, let's just try to mix this again. This is like being able to do this is the ultimate skill of a painter is replicating colors that you've used. Okay, we need some more white. Okay. So let's get a bit of red back in here. Some white. All right, so right now it's very peachy. Taking a little bit of blue is going to make it a little bit more brownish. All right, so here's this Caucasian skin tone here. And I'm not saying that she would have put this same color all over the whole area. I imagine she probably would have had, if anything, maybe a little bit more just plain orange or kind of a um, an earthy reddish kind of quality underneath this. This is going to be underneath the chair. So this is kind of part of the foreground. So already this, her figure is kind of popping out from the background, which is what we want. sides again. Because the sides can be that part of the painting that we that could stay this color or we could layer it with lots of different colors and it's kind of one of those fun things when people see it they're like oh how come there's this orange underneath the blue there or the red like was that a mistake and you're like no 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 I'm Building up the layers of color. Using the technique of the masters. gives us a nice solid foundation. I would have imagined probably most of the canvas that she painted again was probably closer to this color through over the entire thing. But just since we're still learning, I kind of want to use this this technique because I think it's it will help us just to simplify and make things go a little bit faster. I know it's like, well, why it would be faster to paint one color, but I think ultimately 
um, you know, part of the Impressionists are using very subtle effects of changes of color. And when you're a beginner artist, finding that subtlety is really hard. So I'm not going to, I don't want to try to push us too far too quickly. Okay, cleaning my brush. Because I probably won't use this big guy anymore. So I want to make sure it doesn't solidify into a block by the end of the day before I, when I start to clean up. Which is often what happens, you get really excited with painting and then you've got all these brushes that have been used and now they're all hardened rocks and you can't use them. Okay. So, let's look at this painting. What do we do next? Okay. So, we have this blue in the background, which is going to work really nice, but I'm going to suggest we hold off on the blue until very close to the end, because if we make any mistakes here, we can use the blue to just kind of edge around here and clean up the look of the face, right? Versus if we put the blue in now and then we've got to move the nose, then we're going to be up the creek because it's going to be hard to put, to, you know, we're going to have to put paint over top of the blue and it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. So we're going to do the blue will be probably one of the last things we do and it's going to be great because it's going to clean it up. It's going to make the pa painting pop really quick. So in fact, I feel like we want to do take that approach to almost this entire painting. So I think the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint her dress and then the floor and then her face and hands and fan. I might do the fan at the same time as and then the walls. So I'm actually going to use the same sort of approach. I'm going to use the wall and the couch to help clean up any problems that I have there. Okay. So now that I've got my order of business determined here, I just want to look at the canvas, see what's still wet. Some of this I probably should have painted this first and then the background so that this would be nice and dry, but of course I did not take that uh, direction. Okay, so let's work on figuring out... Actually, you know what, since I've got a f the flesh tone painted right now, let's use the flesh tone. I'm like, I've just painted it here, so let's do some of these, the details of the hands and stuff in the face so I'm gonna yeah that makes sense that makes a lot of sense I don't know why it didn't occur to me earlier um, so I could have you know like me doing this is also me thinking out loud to myself so let's we've got this skin tone but it's a little bit dry now so we're gonna mix more of it Probably mix up the rest of this batch So I'll just keep on going here. So I'm going to kind of dial this in a little bit closer. Oops, too much blue. That was, that was a little sloppy. Let's put some white in here. Oh, that's a very greenish. So let's put some red in there. Get some of the, the warmth of the body in here. Now, this is a little bit darker because of the blue that I just used. So if I paint this in here, it might be too dark. Let's add a little bit of white. Lighten that up, keep on lightening it. Let's just see if we, let's take her neck here. Okay, this is okay. I 
can even leave a little bit of the red that was there around the edges. And as I said, I can, if I want, I can go over top and really darken it later. That's pretty good. Let's go to where her hands are here. It's also kind of tricky because you might see say like oh my, the the color is too white or too dark or too brown or too you know like and it's hard to, to notice the difference because right now we've got it's only contrasting it's this bright yellow and this orange and the those are also changing the way that this color appears to our own eyes right so it, it is tricky. One thing you can do is you can hold your paintbrush up to the screen, and, and which is also tricky because the screen is backlit. Um, you could, if you're Caucasian, you can kind of hold it over your hand and see where you are. Now this is definitely way more peachy than this, but we'll see. It's definitely more peachy than my own skin tone. I'm not too concerned about making it absolutely perfect I think that's that looks pretty good so far um, I may even hold off well let's see let's I'm gonna introduce a little bit of darkness on here so I take the same color that's on my brush and then I've got a little bit of this other color around here so I'm just gonna draw a bit of it onto my brush and then I can do things like paint over her thumb there. Part of her forearm, you know, it's pretty subtle. And then in her, oops, I'll get this out of the way. The screen there, her ear, a little bit behind her ear. top of her face just a little bit. And then a little bit under her neck here. See like just tiny variations of color. And we probably will we'll keep it there for right now because we'll see how things change as we go. Okay. So now that we've got that, let's work on her dress, the fan, and the floor for next. Okay. I'll wash my brush here. Now that yellow, this greenish yellow, that's going to be an interesting little task here for her clothing. I'm going to go with a little bit larger brush. So this is my first one that I use for the background. This one I'm going to use for her clothing. And I'll probably still keep a smaller one here to also do some funky details. So what do we want? Now, the the the... The look of this dress is a lot like this color that we mixed to begin with, right? It's got a bit of a cool yellow and even cool blue, a tiny bit of it. It's it's a kind of bright yellow, almost verging on green. In fact, we can see in her dress down towards the bottom, he's actually got some green in there. So this is another reason why we want to paint a warm color on her body first before going before painting this cool yellow green that we're going to do because we want her body to still seem like it's coming forward if we were just to paint this color right on her 
it would have this weird look of her her body f kind of falling backwards into space, which we don't want, obviously. So let's we need some more yellow. Don't we? I think we've got enough white on there and blue. Okay, so let's try to mix this. We're gonna get the paint on the brush. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of white in here. Not too much, but we want some white in there to help um, cover a little bit of the background so it doesn't totally disappear. Okay, let's well, take a tiny bit of blue. Whoa, see how quickly that changed? Woo! I mean, that was one grain of, of blue salt in there, and boom. That's good. Okay. I'm a little bit worried that this was a little bit too dark to start out, so we'll just see as we go here. I don't want to apply it too thick. I don't want big gobs of paint on here. Kind of taking it and kind of spreading it out. It's like I'm allowing some of that paint that was down, that we first applied to come through. We can always build up more layers as we go, but we don't want to rush into it too quickly. I lost sight of where the, the feet are, so I think she's just grown a couple of inches here. She's like, this, you're taking too long. I'm just, I've literally grown a little bit taller than I w was when you started it. So this is where the fan overlaps with her arm, so I'm not going to paint that there. Okay. Oh, yeah, the, her dress comes out this way, so don't forget that. See, isn't it like magic? All of a sudden, these colors coming together... already like the painting is just all of a sudden boom, starting to appear it's like she's super excited okay so maybe while we're right here it looks like you know her dress kind of comes out a little bit wider here okay So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few different things. One of which I'm going to try putting a little bit of extra white into the mixture. Some white off to the side. A little bit of this paint. And I'm going to add that white in a few different places. Some little highlights on her outfit. Again, like I said, the, the light is coming from in behind her. I don't want too much of it. If I get if it's a little over, 
too heavy handed, I'm just going to grab a little bit of the paint and kind of brush it in and make it work, blend back in again. Okay. So now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to wash this brush because I don't want any white to contaminate this next color. I'm going to go a little bit darker on the dress. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing, except this time I'm going to add a little bit more blue. You see, not too much. It's going to go, it changes things quickly. So just a little bit, mix this in. And then there's kind of a little bit of the shadows in her clothing here. Great thing with like impressionism is we don't have to be super, super like worried about making it exactly like this, you know, or, or like realistic. We can kind of play a little bit fast and loose with things. Okay. So let's carry on here. We're, we've got this. I'm going to turn this into a bit more, maybe a little more yellow. Cool yellow, a little dot of that. Okay. I'm just gonna take this, mix this in here, and grab let's see a bit of the warm red. I don't want too much cool red because then that's gonna start pushing it backwards, but a little bit of warm red. We're gonna make a, a brown basically. It's this previous color that was there, we've muddied it up a little bit. Okay. And I paint this on, and I was like, oh my goodness, this, this is going to be too dark, too radical of a color. And look here, does it barely even see any difference, right? So let's make it darker. Let's get a bit more. Oops, that's probably too much. I think it's, and that's too green. What, more brown. There we go. A little more brownish. Right, this is much darker. So I'm just trying to get underneath her chest here. Down at the bottom of her dress is going to be kind of the darkest point. Oh, you see he's got a bit of a halo down there too. I think he probably put some of those brush strokes in at the very, very end just to bring some life back into that area. You know what? This color that we're just playing around with kind of looks a little bit like her fan. So, although you know what? I think we want a little bit, of a, we'll do a warmer version of it. So I'm not even going to bother cleaning my brush. We'll just take this warm red, warm blue. Oops, maybe a little bit too much. Mix that together. Okay, a little too purpley, so we need some warm yellow. Let's put that back in here. Okay. Right, so 
It's the three colors in combination together make a brown. But there's not just one kind of brown, there's lots of different kinds of brown, so you just want to be kind of mindful of what brown you're making. So let's see. This will work, but I think I need just a little bit of white in here. Mm, still a little bit too white. I'm actually just going to mix it off to the side here. Okay. Hmm. It's a little bit close to her skin color, which actually I see is kind of how he did it. So I'm just going to get a little bit. I want it to be a little bit different there. I just don't want it to there be confusion between where does the fan end and her arm end. So. Mary Cassatt was a master painter here, so uh, me less so. So I don't. Uh, she she was probably having quite you know a little you know artists like to play these kind of challenges with themselves. You know what? I'm gonna make the fan very similar to her skin tone. That's gonna be a nice challenge. Um, see, mine's a little bit more purpley than hers, which means I need a little more red in here. too happy with that but I do since I've got this color kind of mixed before I just sort of toss it out I can see a few places where I can use it like in her hand down here just mixing I've just got same sort of dark colors here and all of this is going to make a little more sense when I start getting more of oops Just doing a little outlining of some of these features here. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna go back up to where her ear was and get a little bit of that color there on the back of her ear, darken that. And where was her eye? This is where her eyebrow is. might be let's just put in where so this is her nose I'm gonna chisel this back in here later on I'm just gonna put a little dot here I'm probably gonna use some a little bit of a warmer color for lips later on but I'm not exactly sure just a tiny little dot for her nose which I can paint over later um, and you know I could probably use this for her hair color too. Let's mix this a little more blue in here, blue and red. So this is going to make purple. But I want to make this a little bit darker. So I'm going to take some cool blue, add it to this mixture. And now we're kind of we're mixing across the color wheel. So this color is getting darker and darker. Put some yellow back in here and we're getting a dark brown. Okay. In fact, 
fact, this might be a little bit too dark, so I might have to do a few things here to make a little bit more of a reddish version in a second. You see, there's a bit of a halo of the light, again, the light coming in from behind her. So I'm not going to cover the whole thing in this darker color. Maybe while I've got it, I'm just going to add a little bit of a darker version. So a little bit of a darker color in here. And then we're going to warm it back up to make it a little bit of a more reddish version. Ah, well, I've got this color here. Let's just take a little bit of Time to do her collar. This is just this. I haven't washed my brush. It's just the red from the. Oh, I guess there was some white in there. We'll see if I want to put that in later. Um, okay. Well, it looks like we've actually the same kind of colors we could put down below here so we're, we can just kind of use this kind of mess of colors use a little bit of a bigger brush here add a little bit of white to it and let's see what kind of effect we get here So this kind of impressionist kind of painting of brush strokes around here. We're going to build up some of the surface here with a few different versions of the same color. I'm just going to go back in here. We get brighter red. See how he's outlined this with some red in here. I'm kind of just scrubbing it a bit, right? To get a bit of a dry brush technique going on. Okay, we got that what do we need next i think we need one with a little bit of blue in here oh that's a lot but let's see if we can make it work it's a much different one in here we can use this to really start to build out her shadow see i'm just sort of like Okay, let's go even a little bit darker, a little more blue on there. It seems sort of like this gradual building up. And I just kind of you know, go a little bit outside of the shadow. Maybe even 
just well, my brush is pretty much dry here so I'm just using the dry part of my brush here to scrub in a little bit of shadow um, I'm going to put a little bit more red back in here on top. Okay. I might, I might hold off on any more stuff down here for a second as I um, get just a few little marks here and there. Because I want a little bit of this color that's down here just to kind of come back up into the, this part of the picture. Okay. I'll wash. I've got a couple brushes to wash here. There is some white that I put down in here, but I think that white might be a very similar color that goes on the couch, so I'm going to do that and integrate that color back down on here just as I put this color up into the top half of the picture. Okay, so that color that we've got in the background, that's going to be a little bit of a... So what we've got is, it's a similar kind of skin tone, but we're going to mix a cool version of it, right? So the cool version of that skin tone, so we've got a little bit of blue, we're going to take a bunch of red and our cool yellow. All right, so we've got this kind of brownish mixture. We're going to heap some white onto here. Let's see what we got. That looks pretty good. It looks kind of purpley. All right, it looks like reddish kind of purple. Let's add a little more blue in here. And that's going to make it a little bit more purple brown, which means the missing ingredient is more yellow. better and some of this is going to work really well for um, a few little touches so I'm just going to squeeze a little bit off to the side and we need a lot more white because I paint that in right now it's just going to be too way 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 too dark I can even take this and mix it into here. Okay, so now I'm going to take this color, just like I did with the, the ground, I'm going to start scrubbing it in. Again, with the same type of brush strokes.
we're doing pretty good with time. We're kind of on target here, so. So let's kind of modify this a little bit. Let's do one where we've got a lot more white. It's a little kind of patchwork of lines coming together here. That's making me feel good. Okay. So the little, so a few things. We're going to now try to create the look of this, the cushion here, and maybe darken underneath this chair. So we're doing, going to do the opposite. We we're kind of lightening it up. Actually, roll over right here. I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow, cool yellow, and put it. See how there's like a little bit of a reflection of her, this arm onto the couch here. I like that. That's a nice little subtle hint she put in there. So I want to capture that. Um, in fact, I want to even accentuate that a little bit. A little bit of... One, the Impressionists are kind of famous for mixing a lot of white into their colors, a lot of tints going on, right, which creates a very luminous kind of surface, like a bright, shiny, like they're just like very, um, uh, how do you describe it? Like there's, uh, I mean, I think that's part of the, their, their images is this thing that you just can't quite, you're like, how did they get that look? few of those colors. Let's bring it up top here. Um, okay, like I said before, I got a bit of this darker color. Oops, that's pretty dark, pretty intense shift. So I'm going to back it off a little bit here. There's, this is a little bit of a problematic area just because I'm also inventing stuff. I'm not sure how I want to resolve this down here. So I've got a bit of red in here. This is how I like using the kind of the dirty part of the canvas or the dirty part of the palette is those colors that have been mixed. Just sort of scrubbing some of that color off and um,
this is sort of like I'm trying to suggest this is underneath this couch or anyway we'll see I'll leave that kind of like that for right now and I'm gonna come back here in a couple seconds after I start doing the background Okay, so we're going to do the blue back here next. Um, you know, while I'm uh, blabbing away here, I created a, a, um, a thumbnail and I, I booked a slot for a special bonus episode on November 21st to talk about your artwork and the images that you guys have made so far in these first 19 paintings, I think we're at 19 today. So that so that's a Saturday. If you can't attend, no problem. But I'm going to sit down and, and spend the entire time, probably about an hour, looking at all the artwork that you guys have created. So I would love to see this painting, your version of it, any of the other paintings you've made so far, even other paintings that you've made since we've begun of other subjects. And a number of you guys have sent me images of paintings that you've worked on, applying some of the things that we've been doing in class. And they're ex so amazing, exciting, remarkable images. And I would like to share those with the rest of the group here because we've got a community of artists that have been forming. And I'd love for everybody to have a chance to see the really cool artwork that has been inspired from out of the class. Okay, so we'll do that um, in a week and a half from today. So let's go to the background here, that uh, blue. So there's a few things we've got, actually a little bit of warm blue in the background, so which is again why we want to have this cool color it's going to help push that warm blue backwards rather than fighting with her body to come forward. So the other option would be just to paint some cool blues in here. Um, but it does look like we've got like a warm green kind of dirtier color. So what I'll suggest we do is we use some warm blue and even a little bit of warm cool blue make this mixture so this blue is more neutral and then we got some green so let's take even a little bit of the warm green here oh I like that nice color um, and, and I'm also just gonna put a little bit of white in there even though it's in the background the white is also just gonna dilute it it's gonna help prevent it from looking too f coming too forward so let's see what we got here see how I'm kind of like dabbing it on here this is kind of like your impressionist this is of the way the impressionists would paint you know is the slow build up of layers and the in the extreme of this is your Soro Surat or however you say his name actually but um, but the pointillists painters who used these little dots to build up a unified surface so you're kind of just going around and around adding a little different colors here and a little bit of that too it's not so much in this painting again this is really at the beginning of her um, impressionist phase of her career um, but one of the um, I guess um, uh, what is the one of the the word I'm thinking of one of the key elements approaches of of impressionism is the 
is a little bit of a blur between different objects. And again, that goes into this idea of a unified surface. So rather than there being um, one, like a, a person in front of a background, we often have like the, the person in the background kind of blending together. She's got a little bit more of like a hard outline coming around here, which we can certainly do, but I'm just going to build this up in their traditional way here. I'll get a finer brush for some of those face details in here because I'm going to clean up the shape of her nose here in a minute. So I got uh, just some regular warm blue with some white in there. All right, we could potentially, depending on, you know, with a few more details, be really done right about close to now. You know, so if, if you are around this area, this could be, depending on, on how you feel about your picture, could be a time to say, you know what, I feel like I've done enough and I'm getting a little bit scared that I'm going to, you know, drive the train over the edge of the bridge here and I'm just going to call it a day that would be totally acceptable um i'm just going to keep on going for another 15 minutes or so and tie up with a little bit more detailing but again i'm pretty sh happy with where i am see i'm just taking my brush and just the same color getting this couch cushion a little bit of some darker stuff, bring some of this paint that's on my brush very delicately in a few places. I think I'm going to put some colder blue back on here. I feel like this is starting to really leap forward. I want that to recede. So I'm just going to go full on with the cold blue here. Okay, and now I'm just going to get in here with a little bit more of a finer brush. And let's start kind of refining her face here. So 
I'm just doing the same thing I was doing before, but just a little bit, a smaller brush. Just to get a little bit closer to the details. I don't want to go too much. I kind of like this a little bit of a halo that's been created around here. I think we need a little bit of a purple, a cool purple. So let's take this, some cool purple, mix that together. So I didn't use these here to make a purple. I wanted a cooler purple, less intense. It's still gonna be pretty dark. And once again, I'm just gonna take this. You know, I've, to be honest, I've ever, I'm just looking at the at her painting this area for the first time in I don't know ten minutes, and I realize I've, I'm doing it kind of differently than she has. Um, I'm doing kind of a little bit more of a traditional impressionist kind of approach. So if you're wondering, like, whoa, that looks a little different, um, it's because I kind of spaced out and just started painting my own thing. Which, you know, is again, you, you, the painting has to be its own thing. It's its own organism at some point. And, you know, if this if I'm going to hang this on the wall, I've got to, it's got to look good on its own. The, the, the origin of where it came from is kind of starts to disappear. keep on doing this and getting in there what I'll do I'm gonna add a little more water into my mixture because one thing especially with this canvas that wasn't prepared you know there's still so much of the weave showing through and to be honest it kind of drives me a bit batty it's kind of um, I'm just gonna add a little green in here Did see that she had a lot more green in this part of the picture. It's up to you how how intense you want to go with like filling up all of the this uh, background and the weave. You 
you might be happy with it kind of a little bit uh, less filled in than me. Um, okay. I think I'm going to go to one of, find one of my smallest brushes here. All right, very small brush. And I'm going to do these, uh, the, the fan. And, well, you know, I'm pretty close. I mean, I, again, I could fight with this for a while. You know, I've, I've kind of come in on her body a little bit more than it originally is. I'm just taking the same color I just mixed, adding a little bit more... Um, cool red into it and maybe I should just show you what I did here so I just took this same color here and just took a little bit of this cool sorry all these are, are some cool colors because they're a little bit darker and let's see let me get her fan here and this line Because right now I'm pretty close to being done. So I'm just going to take my time here. And I don't want to kind of just race off and start doing some kind of nutty things. So there's that dark line. Let's kind of lighten it back up with a little bit more... Uh, do I have any white left on here? Let's get a little white on here. Right, just those little hints of lines is enough. We don't need to kind of labor over them. People will understand what's going on here. Ah, a little funky stuff going on with this fan. Um, but, you know, as long as I see these lines are going... over her fingertips here, so that we know that her hand is in behind. Okay. We're going to go into her hair and darken that up significantly. Kind of making a, a little mush here of just a bunch of different colors to get nice and as dark as possible. And if it's too purpley, we'll just add a little bit of red in here and it's going to go... All these colors crossing across the neutral core make for a nice and dark color. Hmm. 
you know, there's, I could, I, I kind of should, well, let's get a little bit of white out here. I start getting restless as the painting is near the end. Am I, is it just me? Where you're like, oh, I'm so close, I just want to be done. Um... You know, I like the way my painting is kind of standing on its own. When I look at the original, it, it makes me feel a little bit anxious. So, again, the... the, the uh, <coughs> Excuse me. My goodness. So, it's, it's, it is... At some point, you want to just sort of turn off the, the original and look at what you got here. And are you happy with what you got? And can you live with what you got? <laughs> Um, I do want to put a little bit of highlights back into her hair. I got a little close with the blue. Maybe a little bit of color on her fan, and then I'm going to be done. I realize I could continue working on this for a while, but... The point is not to make a perfect painting. It's just to really make a painting. Something we can be proud of and... So we're going to mix this uh, brown for her hair again. Let's see, we can take a little bit of blue, red. Make it orange again. that mixture and put that brush down I'm gonna get this paint on my brush the really fine brush and I'm gonna mix it into some white over here okay in fact I think I want just a little bit of yellow on there to kind of give it a bit of a the light from behind. Let's see how well this works up here. bit bright a little bit intense I might have gone a little over a little too much but I'm gonna dial it back here in a second because we can keep some of that we just want it to be not quite so dark so let's just take our brush and kind of try to integrate a bit of this a little bit lighter color. Here I got a bit of this red and some of these colors. I'm just gonna put a few of these things on her, her 
and just, just kind of like suggest that there's some kind of image on here. Right, it gives the impression of some kind of design or pattern. Just got this green here, so I'm just going to take that green. that same color just a few other places that may need just a slight upgrade in brush size Oops, that brush is missing its finger right in there and if it's still wet you can kind of brush it out and move it around and so I was a little bit unhappy with how wide or how how I kind of cut those hips in a little too much. Okay, almost done here, folks. If you um, are enjoying this course and you're getting something out of it, I would love it if you could sh like and subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, let everybody know what you've been up to. If you're feeling generous and you want to contribute a small donation via PayPal, you can do that. There's a link to the PayPal in the description below. Um, for some odd reason, my account was just demonetized by Google so the super chat's not working today so hopefully that should be rectified uh, over the next couple of days um, let's see I'll go a little bit Okay. Now at some point I'm gonna have to just call it because I feel I'm pretty happy with the way it's turned out. Um, there's some of this. 
stuff that he threw in there towards the very end. Or she did, sorry, my apology. Um, make sure what she's doing is just trying to get these highlights in to kind of make it look like that the figure's really popping off of this background, so. Background feels a little, this blue is driving me a little bit nuts. But again, it's a question of like, how much am I actually interested in fiddling with some of that stuff? And what is the likelihood that it's going to improve? Um... around she's got some white in here which I don't have do I want to put that in there let me think on it while I You know what, I think, I think this is probably good. Should I put, should I make that background darker? It's so hard to say, it's so hard to say. Cause I keep looking at the monitor and on the monitor it looks like, see this is, this is my favorite part of making a painting, is this kind of part where you just kind of step back and you gotta look at it and, and try to evaluate it on its own. <coughs> When I look at it like this, and again, I have to remember that most people are never going to be maybe further than hands, you know, arm's length away. When I look at it like that, I've, I'm pretty happy with it. When I look at her painting, all I can see is the differences between her painting and my painting. Um, but this will, might be the only time where they're ever side by side ever again unless somebody's looking at it on their phone or something so I think I think I'm gonna keep it like this okay so let's get out the pencil and we're gonna sign this here <laughs> Not bad for a couple of hours worth of work, hey? Eh? That's pretty good. It goes back onto the stack of all the paintings that I've got. I would love to see what you did with this painting, even if you're not happy with the painting itself. In fact, when I've done this, when I've given people feedback on their artwork, usually people find that 
the feedback I give them on their paintings that they're not happy with is way more helpful than the feedback I give people on paintings that they're already happy with, right? So for those of you who just want some praise, then send me just your best paintings and I'll give you lots of praise. I will give you super constructive, positive feedback. But if there's some of your paintings, you're just like, I don't know. I thought I was following step by step along with you, Michael. And then you turned out with this great painting and I turned out with this pile of slop. What happened along the way? Right. And you're super frustrated. And then you're starting, you're like, there's something goes wrong in my paintings halfway through where it just goes off the rail somehow. Like, what am I doing wrong? Well, I would strongly encourage you to be brave and courageous and send me those images. In fact, I don't have to use your name. I don't have to use your name to, on the ones that you do like. You can keep it totally anonymous unless you've signed your name and put your email at the bottom of your painting, which is super unlikely, right? Then no one will know who it is. But I guarantee you those are, the, are I think, the most interesting, most helpful conversations because... I guarantee you there's lots of people out there who are going through a similar kind of struggle and can't figure out what it is. And unless I see some of those artworks, there's nothing I can do to help you. Obviously, when, we're, when I'm teaching classes and there's 20 people in a room, I can go around and say, oh, I think you need a little bit more white in that paint, and that would help. It's like, oh, yeah, totally. Now I see it. Boom. The painting fixed, right? But without... You know, I'm just sitting here talking into the vacuum of space and I can't see anybody's artwork. That would be a way for you to take advantage of, you know, people pay me thousands of dollars to do this at the university. So this is an opportunity for you to get free feedback on your artwork from a professional artist who's painting the exact same painting that you're painting. There's not very many opportunities to do that that I can think of. So I look forward to seeing your artwork. We're going to do that on November 21st. It's a Saturday at 4 p.m. PST, Vancouver, Los Angeles, West Coast time. We're going to continue painting other paintings until then. I believe next week, again, we're doing something totally different. Next week, we're going to paint Alex Katz's Green Cap. And it's a iconic painting by Alex Katz who... I think he's still alive. He's one of those grand masters of painting that uh, does mostly figurative painting, a little bit of, I mean, it does a, has done a lot of landscape, but uh, he's an American East Coast artist. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his. He, we're we're going to do a portrait, but I'm going to walk you through it. It's going to be nice and straightforward. You don't have to be worried about not being able to, to draw faces. Having said that, I did do a whole 40 episode series on drawing here on YouTube, which you can watch and you can watch me show you how to draw a face if you want a little bit more um, guidance before we begin again uh, next week. Anyway, looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing you guys again. Um, let me see. And thank you. There's lots of emails that I, I have seen coming through. Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, direct messages, all those kind of things. I'm sorry I haven't got to them. I've read a bunch of them, but I just, I'll just reply to them over the next couple of days over the weekend. So, um, have I covered everything? I did see a few comments here. People say, ah, yes, it's uh, Tigre Rouge Blitz says, oh, ye, uh, ah, ye, it's coming along. Deborah says, I love the way you have made the colors give the painting so much dimension. Thank you very much, Deborah. It's just using the opposing warm and cool colors helps push certain things backwards in space so it appears to recede and give depth to the picture. And those warmer colors want to move forward through our eyes. It's an optical illusion, um, but it's a, an illusion artists have been using for thousands of years to great effect, right? And when, if, until we learn those techniques, it just seems so mysterious, right? And then you use them and you, and you start using them over and over again. You're like, ah, oh, it just makes the painting work, right? Uh, Deborah says, thank you. I will send you this when I'm done. Sue says, thank you so much. Enjoyed it tonight. Thank you, everybody. Uh, have yourself a wonderful rest of your uh, week and weekend. And we will see you on the other side.